Hello friends. Today's video is about the three main styles of writing and how to teach them to the children. The three styles are Zeyna Bloza or print writing, Denilian print writing and cursive writing, sometimes also known as the Denilian cursive writing. All schools follow one or the other style. Welcome to Happiness Mantra. Do like, share and subscribe for more such videos. The first writing style is the Zeyna Bloza or the print writing. This style is relatively easy for the children to copy and understand because the letters are upright and there are no tails. Like see, a has no tail, a d has no tail. So the children find it easy to copy. And this is exactly the kind of font they'll find in their books. So reading again becomes easier once they're familiar with this font. This font is never combined while writing words. So even if I write a word, we will write it separately like this. So there'll be less space between each letter to form the word and a little extra space between the words to make a differentiation. This is how the print writing works. After this, we have the Denilian print writing. It is slightly different from the previous one in the sense that here each letter has a tail where required, of course. So not all of them like a bird cannot have a tail. But most of the letters, where possible, will have a tail. And this is a mix between the pure print and cursive. It is easy for the children to transition from this kind of font into cursive writing. Here again, the letters are combined to a certain extent. And remember a very important thing that the letters are tilted slightly towards the right while we use this font. So in this case, if we combine This is how we would write the words. Now our final font is the cursive writing or the Denilian cursive writing. It's the same. Here there are complete curves in all the alphabets. They all start from the bottom line so that the alphabets can be completely combined. In cursive writing, the child is not supposed to pick up the pencil at all while finishing a word. So one benefit of this is that it is usually faster. It helps the child to focus better because the child is completing a full word before moving on. So in case of cursive, now this is the cursive capital for T. See. We will start each letter from this line. Everything, every letter will start from here and the letters have a tail to connect to the next letter in the end. So this is what cursive is all about. Now that I have introduced all the three writing styles to you, there are a few key things that I'd like to point out. Number one, while teaching the formation, make sure the child always goes top to bottom whether it is in any style, simple print or the denial print. That's very important because if the child is writing reverse, initially it will not be a problem. But later when the child is writing larger texts, this causes fatigue and the child is, will not be willing to write. So ensure that the child always starts from the top and moves to the bottom. That is one very key pointer. Secondly, there's a reason why I prefer cursive. One major factor is that the B and D are totally different. So there is no case in which the child would do a mirror imaging or get confused between these two letters in case of cursive. So if you find that your child is uh, often confused between the formation of B and D, then you can switch to cursive for these letters or for the entire font if the school allows. So 
next point that I'm going to pick up is how to group the letters while teaching the children to write it. So first I'll pick up the uh, Zainab Loza style where in the set one, we have the set one here where we'll teach the child e t f and j. It's basically based on the strokes. So the strokes for all these follow a straight line basically, which is the reason they are taken in one category. The next category that I'll follow is the curves. So I start with the cur. The cur is converted into a, which is converted into d. Again, o. The same curve, up, down, and turn becomes a g, and a qu. So this is the set two, which is based on the curves. We have a set 3 based on another kind of curves or bumps actually. So we have M, N, H, and A. So these four letters are bumpy letters. Then we have a category of the slant line. In that we'll have this, this, x, y, and z. Now the remaining leftover alphabets which did not fall in any of these categories were b, e, p, r, s. So this is the sequence in which letters are taught. Sometimes after set 1, uh, people prefer to teach set 4. But these are more common alphabets. So if the child learns these first, it's easier for the child to move on to dictations. But it is completely your wish and the comfort of your child. But usually these sets of letters are combined. There is no sequence to the set as such. So you can teach set 1 and then do set 3 or set 4. It really doesn't make a difference. But if you teach these letters together, it is easier for the child to write them. Now we'll do the grouping for our Denelian print letters. It's almost the same. So here the first set would have, remember, slightly tilted to the right. That is very, very essential. So the first set is the same here. In the next set, see this has a tail. It'll have a tail again. The letters are again common. Now the letters would change because there are certain letters here which are different from the print style. The year. Year is written in the formation of a U or the a uh sound, which is the reason we put them together in the same group. And so is this w. The fourth group with simple slant letters will have just these three alphabets letters, and the last group has all the remaining letters. B, E, P, R, S, and the K. So this is how you group the letters in this case, which is the delineal print case. And remember to slant the alphabets a little and to ensure that where needed, the tails are there. Now our final grouping is of the cursive letters. So here in the set 1, we're going to have just three letters, E, J and T. Then we'll have set 2. Now here we'll have all the looped letters together. 
so this is the simplest which is the le and then we have the same formation moving up to make a b same formation going completely down and coming back for f again coming up to make a h and finally to make a k so this is how you group together these letters next we have the third set here so similar pattern the first thing to teach is the k and remember when you're teaching k they go slant slightly ahead and then come back so make sure that this formation is taught correctly because a lot of other letters are going to be dependent on this so once they do their k this is how they'll go in for their a same go ahead a little come back up 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 down 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 turn make a k up down 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 loop or complete come back and like this and we also have qua loop it up and qua now we come to set 4 here set 4 would have the bouncy letters so m n a we even add w and w here as well as y now all the remaining letters which will go into set 5 and they are a p so this is how these letters are grouped do follow the pattern that i have explained because that is very essential once the children get the hang of the pattern it's very easy to teach them these letters now especially for these two sets if the first two letters that is the l and the k are clear then forming the rest of them becomes relatively easier so spend a little extra time here if required and make sure that the children do their work nicely i hope this video was helpful for you Please let me know in the comments what kind of writing style you're using for your children and how is it benefiting you and would you like to change the style that you're using thank you and have a nice day happy writing happy teaching